<laughs> he would kick your ass right now. He's you like do eight realize tall. This, right? <laughs> All right, we're going to kick it over to the band. Right about Time for tomorrow. Now. All right, guys. Here we go. I've got a gun in my hand, but that gun won't cock. My finger's on the trigger, but the trigger seems locked. I can't stop staring at the tic-tac clock. And even if I could, I would never give up. With a vest on my chest, a bullet in my lung. I can't believe I'm dying with my song unsung. And if and when I die, won't you bury me alone? Because I'll never get to heaven if I'm singing this song. Seem like forever.
Again, we're Target for tomorrow on the Horns of Destruction. We're out of uh, Corvallis, Oregon, and Portland, Oregon. We kind of go back and forth. Um, so, yeah, we've been here for a few hours with the 30-hour uh, day here, and uh, we thought it would be a good time to introduce everybody. So, starting over here, we got Jason Lusk on the bass. <laughs> and uh, over there on trombone, we've got Oren Clark. On trombone, we got Brian Fitzsimmons. Right here we got Michael Bodie on tenor saxophone and some vocals. In the back there we got uh, Charlie McGowan on the drums. <laughs> and of course, our fearless leader. Uh, yeah, I'm Aaron Broussard. And um, yeah, we've uh, we've got a MySpace, we've got a Facebook, we got a Twitter. We have a real web page. A, a real website that we're working on. But uh, if you really like what you hear and you don't actually know of any personally, you can Google it or you can go to iTunes where we've got our four-track EP for sale. Uh, our four-track EP sponsored by PBS FM. There we go. <laughs> but yeah, we're, we're working some things out, and if you're lucky enough, you might just get one of our CDs or T-shirts tonight. So, um, without any further ado, without any further ado, we're gonna close this bit with a uh, the song we tried to start with. So here we go. <laughs> this is now boarding.
it. Get out that door and I'll be right down the block. My professor to the floor. It's all the same effort before. Just keep on singing through my hair. My result is in the back. Thank you. So I believe it's about that time now to uh, move along. Yeah, yeah, ish. All right, cool. Ish. Is it is it intro time over there? Are we good? Yes. All right. everything I can not to talk into this microphone because it's for all of you. Oh, okay. It's like kind of the natural innate thing I want to do. Hi, I'm Cami Chaos. Where are we? We're at Pi. <laughs> no, what? I mean, where's the camera? Why are you asking me? I don't know. I get I'm just going to talk. I assume, I assume right someone here. will I point a camera right at your smiling face, hon. Oh, hello. Yeah, yep. it's so good. Uh, uh, Hi. Uh, now I can be Cami Chaos. And this can be Strange Love Live from 30 Hour Day. Right now. now. <laughs> like, what? This is my thing. Go ahead. Um, you go ahead. Yeah, you just stand there. What? what? He's, he's going to do it too. Okay, you stand. Just take a step to the side. Okay, I'm Cam Chaos. This is 30. Oh, jeez. Okay, Dr. Hey. Normal would like hey. to be introduced as oh, well. Okay. Dude. All right. I was gonna. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> Should I give you the bear hug like you yeah. give me in our publicity chat? I was going to introduce the we band. Need, I need a mic. I was gonna. Oh. The mic is okay, you can introduce the band. Hey, yeah. Doc Normal here. How you That's doing? Not you're a ham. I know. And you're a ham. What did I do? Uh, this is my turn to be a ham. Right. Okay. Say. Watch the <laughs> numbers plummet. <laughs> get in here. No. Okay. okay. This is Target for tomorrow and the Horns of Destruction. Woo! <laughs> They have been with us all night. They started playing around seven-ish, in the ish, ish time. We've been sweating them under hot light. I don't think we fed them. Yeah, we, we yeah, we did. Yeah, we got, if you didn't feed us, then we stole your food. 
Oh, good. I'm glad we fed you. So I'm going to pass this around. I'm going to start over here because you're closest and say hello. And I know that you guys may have already done a little introduction period, but I think there should be more. So introduce yourself. All right. Uh, my name is Jason Lusk. I'm a bass player, photographer for tomorrow. I'm having a great time here so far. I really like what you guys are doing. Thank you. Jason. Hi, I'm uh, Aaron Broussard, and uh, I do the, the singing and the guitaring in our band. And guitaring, um, is that a technical? It can be. Okay, I'm going to go be. with guitaring as a technical yeah, term. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, we're just really glad that uh, we got invited out to this. This is a killer broadcast you guys got going on, so Thank we appreciate you. it. Oh, this is Charlie Awesome. My, <laughs> my name is, that's my Twitter name, <laughs> Charlie Awesome. Um, I'm the drummer, and they did feed us, because if they didn't, I'd have been comatose by now. Yeah. Probably. That's so, fair. Yeah. I All lost right. my voice last night at the Blazers game. Woo! Ah! Woo! I want to say that one. Hey, uh, my name's Michael Bodie, and I play saxophone, and um, also one of the songwriters, but really... We're kind of all songwriters because we just jam and oh, make <laughs> make awesome music. So there we go. All are. right. Uh, I'm Brian Fitzsimmons. You you may have seen me getting molested by the PDXFM people. Uh-huh. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I play the trumpet, and uh, this is a great event, and I'm really glad that we could be involved. All right. I'm Owen Clark. I do all the uh, the tromboning. That's also a <laughs> technical, technical term. Thing. Oh yeah, you, what you guys are doing here is great. Thank you. Thanks. Well, you guys are doing <laughs> is great. Um, I really can't thank you guys enough for joining us. Are you guys gonna stick around for just a tiny bit longer? Yeah. 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 Do you do you want to take that? Okay. Oh, oh, is it me now? Do you want it to talk? All right. You go ahead, sweetie. So we're really happy. guys and so as we transition over to the that's stage we're going to ask to do yet another that's our cue to go yeah. over wonderful here. full walk tune and uh, and then we'll be back uh, for more fun okay. with target for tomorrow um, so i'm out of here wait hey megan thank you okay so i want
It's all for you guys. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, Marie, mm -hmm. why don't you tell us some things while I eat this fudge? <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, the topic, does that matter? or? It does. Okay. You can talk about the fudge. I can talk about the fudge. I can tell I you the recipe. I just would like you to eat, so, or I would like you to talk okay, so that talk. I'm the okay. eater. Yeah. Well, I can talk about why I'm here. Yep. Please do. Okay. Please do. Um, well, I'm here because one of the charities that you're supporting is Free, Free Geek. Geek, which is very near and dear to my heart mm -hmm. because my son actually volunteers there every single day it's open, um, mm -hmm. which is really actually pretty amazing given what it takes for him to get there because he was born 30 and a half years ago with spina bifida, and he's paralyzed from like the armpits down. Mm -hmm. and all the things that go with that. And he, uh, you know, there was a moment in high school when I had to go take a book to him or something at school that he had forgotten. Mm -hmm. And it was during lunchtime and I went into the cafeteria and looked around in this like crazy mass of teeming teenagers. And I saw him and he was sitting at a table all by himself. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I had like worked all his life to try to prevent that kind of thing from happening. Yeah. And then it was, this realization of like, wow, you know, the world just might not be able to handle people that are that different. Mm -hmm. And so that's, you know, free geek because it's like um, a second home for him. He's really accepted there. Mm -hmm. He's loved there. He feels he belongs there. And I wasn't really sure that he would ever find a place outside home, yeah. you know, to do that. So, uh, you know, it's, it has a very special place in my heart. Yeah. So, well, and uh, I mean, Mary, you have been instrumental in helping to build this, this whole thing out quite frankly. I mean, so you said you've given us so much help and support throughout the entire event that we've had. It's been really, really great to have you here for the show this week. And I just want to say thank you again for helping to keep this thing going. So. Everybody here, you should know that <coughs> even though you weren't cognizant of it, <laughs> Rick especially, and yeah, and I too have been talking with Marie, and she's been getting things done, and like pulling little puppet master strings, <laughs> <laughs> seriously pulling little puppet master strings to get things going so that we could pull this entire thing off. Yep. Yep. So thank you. Thank you so You're much. welcome. So I'm, I'm very I really, nice. you know, <laughs> did very little. <laughs> <laughs> you did enough to make us very happy. <laughs> I think, uh, you know, it's just so exciting. I work at a foundation, mm -hmm. so we see a whole lot of uh, nonprofit work and efforts to support nonprofits. And um, this one really caught my attention, you know? And it was because I think it was just sort of unlikely, you know? Um, you guys don't work in the nonprofit world. 
And uh, you know, I think a lot of nonprofits feel that people outside that nonprofit realm really just don't know what nonprofits do. And seriously, if nonprofits close down, everything would the close world down, would essentially. Yeah. Yeah. So um, you know, being at a foundation and seeing new, really innovative and creative ideas and people like you being involved is really inspiring. So I think, uh, you know, it seems like because of social media and so forth, there's really going to be a whole new ch uh, opportunities in fundraising, and I think you guys have really tapped into that, mm -hmm. and I'd really like to see a lot more of it. So I'm really happy to support it. Thank We're you. working on it. Someone else who's working on it. <laughs> Hi, Amy. <laughs> Hi. You've been awfully quiet over there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Would you like to say hi to the folks at home? Hi. To Amy, tell us what it is that you have been doing. Um, well, I used to have the great pleasure of working at Meyer mm -hmm. with Marie, um, but now I work with a nonprofit called Net Squared. So we're focused specifically on using social technologies for social good, um, both for like registered traditional nonprofits and individuals that have ideas to do things to change the world. Um, so we do a lot of community work around the world and have monthly events that a lot of people I know here have gone to in Portland called Net Tuesdays. Um, and we have those now in 60 cities around the world every month. Wow. Um, but then we also do innovation challenges and fund new technology projects um, that help often developing countries where the, you need to create an innovative approach to using technology to, for um, adoption. So how did you get into this realm? Uh, I kind of only know this realm. Yeah. <laughs> My, I went to college and majored in new media mm -hmm. and worked in nonprofits as a college student when you know, like Facebook was only for college kids. And I'd be working for a nonprofit and I was like, wow, your audience is younger people. I will put you in Facebook <laughs> where you're not allowed to be because you're not in college, you know? Mm -hmm. And really saw how... Um, how open that created the space to people that weren't, as Marie said, like weren't aware traditionally of what nonprofits did, able to see the service they used was tied to a nonprofit or resources they used were tied to a nonprofit because they were accessing them online in their social spaces. Um, so since then, I've just continued to do it. So what do you guys think is the barrier that keeps people from being aware of not only what's going on within nonprofits, but just, I mean, it just goes over so many people's heads. They don't realize how much of the world wouldn't be able to survive. Mm -hmm. hmm, I think, you know. Is it just easy to overlook something if you don't have to? Yeah, I think, you know, the, the people that I know who are involved in nonprofits um, usually begin, come in it in the first place because they personally someone in their family or someone they know experienced something that then, you know, a nonprofit was helpful. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And unfortunately, I think, you know, we, we don't tell those stories enough. You know, we sort of, um, you know, it, it, it feels like the nonprofit side isn't really telling the stories enough. Yep. And, you know, uh, it takes sort of stopping and listening mm -hmm. and paying attention. And, um, you know, that's one thing that I think both Amy and I are really, uh, that's really a big part of our motivation. Mm -hmm. Yep. I mean, as far as the storytelling goes, I think a lot of nonprofits um, don't tell stories because they don't think they're their stories to tell mm -hmm. because they aren't the ones getting served, they're the ones doing the serving, but they also aren't proactively creating opportunities for those people they're serving to tell their story on their platform mm -hmm. and, and advocate for them. Um, because they don't, a lot of nonprofits I've worked with have said like, well, it feels like we're using them if we ask them to like tout That's how helpful we were. Like, you know, it looks like we're, we're using they're, the experience. They're nonprofits, but they're using them to exactly. help mm -hmm. more people. Right, so they don't, they don't encourage it, but people want, you know? Yeah. Blaine mm -hmm. loves Free Geek. He would love mm -hmm. to tell that story. Mm -hmm. You know, um, it's not using it. It's giving them the showcase instead of right. you. Yeah. And, you know, I think um, 
even I think when I look at myself, even in my family, when I when I was caring for my son as a single parent, you know, I didn't really tell people about our struggles. Mm -hmm. I because you know maybe you know I didn't really want to like admit that I was in a situation where I was having to carry my son up and down the stairs when he was 16 years old mm -hmm. because we didn't have a bathroom on the first floor. And so, you know, I think parents really kind of blame themselves and think, you know, that's some sort of failing of mine and the rest of the world really doesn't want to know about it. And I think finally I overcame that and then, um, you know, was able to like, you know, write even in my blog now, mm -hmm. yeah. I write things about my son, mm -hmm. and uh, you know it's it, it can be it can feel very isolating, mm -hmm. and you know I I think that things like this, and it is really a perfect way to bring those two worlds together because I mean it's not two worlds. No, yeah. it's not. Right. And you know at any moment, any one of the people not in the nonprofit world could find themselves you know, in need of nonprofit. Well, and I think we've been lucky to, um, you know, apart from the amazing production staff that we have that we really, really couldn't find yeah. off the shelf. Yay, production. Wow. But a lot of the stuff we're using to manage the, the event, like mm -hmm. the donations and mm -hmm. like Network for Good and causes mm -hmm. and stuff that you set us up, that's something that are, before there was a huge barrier to entry there. And right. now it's mm -hmm. accessible not only to the nonprofits, but anybody who wants right. to try and raise money for yeah. a nonprofit. And that's a that's a huge change yeah. in the world of fundraising to empower anybody to go out right. and, and earn money for a yeah. nonprofit they want to support. Mm -hmm. And so it's really interesting to see that change mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. coming because of, you know, something that people think of as kind of what did you eat for lunch today? You know, yeah. like it, it, that's making a huge change. There's yeah. a fair amount of that too. Right. Yeah. I, I, I do struggle. tweet when I. Eat for lunch. I think yeah. the struggle then is to help educate nonprofits about how, yes, individuals are out there campaigning or raising money yeah. on their behalf, but you need to find them and make sure that you're thanking those people or giving right. them the tools they need. Give them your logo. Give them your missions. You know, yeah. give them whatever so that they feel like you know they're campaigning for you or raising money for you and that you appreciate it and. Ask the people that donate to connect with you, and you know, because yep. um, it's just a totally different way than sending out a postcard every year. <laughs> you know, <laughs> exactly. Is it that some of the nonprofits just aren't, don't have the resources to have a social media person that can help them manage that and help them engage the people that want to help yeah. them? I, I think that they don't have a social media person, but I also think that they don't realize everyone on the staff yeah. should be involved. That yeah. Yeah. it isn't the social media officer's right. job, right. you know, both the fundraiser and the communications person and the volunteer coordinator should all be in Facebook, mm -hmm. if that's where your audience is, you know? Yeah. Um, otherwise, it'll every conversation you have in that space will be about fundraising, if you're in the fundraising department, right. you know? And right. sometimes yeah. people want to volunteer for you, or sometimes they want to be like, I like you, and that's all I want, yeah. Yeah. you know? Yeah. And that's all okay, <laughs> but right. it means that the whole organization needs to have some contact there. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, nonprofits, especially over the past year in the recession, the demand for their services has just it's really swelling. increased. Mm -hmm. And uh, foundation grant support and individual do donations and mm -hmm. government funding or whatever has gone down. So it's like this horrible sort of yeah. uh, catch-22. Yeah. yeah. And so you know, a lot of nonprofits, I think when they hear about social media or those kinds of opportunities, they think, you know, I'm already so busy. Everybody here has way too much to do already. Uh, we don't get paid enough. You know, we are underfunded and all that. So, you know, it's to the, it, it can seem like adding something new when, in fact, as Amy mm -hmm. said, it's like you just couldn't make it part of what you do every day. Right. right. How you do your job. Yeah. It's not a new job. Yeah. 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 Right. yeah. So before we have you guys go, I want to know what people within nonprofits should be doing mm -hmm. to help educate people that are on the outside mm -hmm. and what people on the outside should be should know about helping nonprofits. In twenty words or less? In, 20 <laughs> words or less. Okay. In 140 characters. Yeah, yeah. Sure. right. Count your letters. <laughs> right. Um, I think, you know, nonprofits 
are, it, it would really help if they could kind of step out of their daily work and sort of look mm -hmm. at the big picture mm -hmm. and realize that, you know, they can, there's a, a lot of people really are inclined to support them, mm -hmm. but sometimes it's really hard to figure out how to do that. Mm -hmm. And, right. you know, it shouldn't be so hard to give a nonprofit money or it's to, uh, to uh, <laughs> you know, provide support in other ways. So, you know, and, and I think, you know, just every person just sort of getting in touch with the compassion that mm -hmm. they have the capacity to feel mm -hmm. is, I mean, and what you, what you guys are doing, I think, is exactly what makes that happen. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And in, 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 to, in an audience, in a venue that otherwise wouldn't, you know, mm -hmm. so. Yeah. Thank exactly. you. Awesome. Well, Thank you and much. somebody else who hopefully we can bring her. On. Oh, we need to stall a little bit, but um, we're we're also trying to get Beth Cantor on the line oh, to chat guys, with us a little bit. Are you guys almost ready with Beth? Almost. Okay. So, she, for people who don't know, Beth is uh, you know one of the most outspoken proponents for using social media for nonprofit fundraising and. Um, I was lucky enough to see her speak at Gnome Dex mm -hmm. a couple years back, and just an amazing uh, fundraising effort there with just the Gnome Dex. Mm -hmm. yeah. continue yep. Well, I think you should just ask her all the questions you ask us because she can yeah. give you way better answers. <laughs> and I can remember what I said. Yeah. 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 What was that? Really? She just like she's the go-to person in the nonprofit world. I mean, she compiles all the information that everybody mm -hmm. else has and mm -hmm. distills it and. Yeah. She definitely it. embodies she the shares. ethos of oh. the nonprofit tech scene She's with amazing. sharing and collaborating yeah. all yeah. the time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She's, yeah. uh, you know, we, we were fortunate enough to bring her out to Portland to speak a couple of years ago mm -hmm. for a free event for nonprofits yeah. to help them, um, you know, learn from her. Yeah. And yeah. It was wonderful. Yeah, she's great. I so think that that while we're waiting for Beth to come up, I'm going to take a momentary time out to tell you guys. <laughs> I, it looks like Target for tomorrow is starting to pack up, but they have, oh, they're not. Oh, no, I'm getting the shaking heads. I saw them hanging T-shirts. <laughs> they have donated for the auction tomorrow five T-shirts, five CDs. You want to bring Ooh. one over, Charlie? Yeah? <laughs> I just saw them hanging up things, and I thought, you know, yeah. hey, we'll bring it over. Cool. Does someone want to bring over a mic? Uh, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> you guys can just lean uncomfortably yeah. into Rick. It's okay. That's all right. Come on, slow my ride. How's it going? He's going to be Santa tomorrow. Thank you so much. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Thank Rick. Renny. We have everybody on staff yeah, here tonight. Yeah, we put everybody into work. Randy right, shows show up. up. Hey, <laughs> get a microphone for us. Thank you so much. Okay. So you guys have brought us some items for our auction. Yeah, I don't know. We set them up over there because I figured a camera hit it, but it doesn't make any difference. Uh, we all hand make our cameras. We <laughs> make our cameras. Our camera guy was <laughs> I got this right there. Um, we all make our shirts ourselves, spray paint, stencils, and whatnot. So each one's actually unique. Awesome. The CDs, on the other hand, are duplicated, so they're not. <laughs> but... Um, yeah, we got five of each. I don't know how these guys are gonna give them away, but I think we're gonna we're gonna um, bundle them together. Yeah. yeah. So if you want a T-shirt and a CD, give us money. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I just really, I mean, from us to a band to you guys, like outside of all this, like we really want to thank you for giving us this huge opportunity because we've been we're following amazing. the. Awesome. I don't know, the viewers thing. Mm -hmm. I've been following it all day to see how many people, and it seems to be consistently around 400. I don't know what it is now, but it's pretty sweet that we just played in front of 400 people. Who knows where they are? So, but yeah, if you uh, if you guys want to check out, we'll, we'll they'll, you'll see them next time we play, which will be in, I don't know sometime. And uh, but yeah, if we get a, we get a big shrug from backstage there. But <laughs> again. Oh no, it'll make me happy. Yeah. So. And everything that makes me happy uh, is good. So it's kind of the way it yeah, works. Our right favorites here. are all made by us. This is our four-track EP. We recorded ourselves using all of our own equipment in garages and yeah. empty cool. nightclubs and all that good stuff. Very cool. No, not, not even kidding. Not kidding at all. And, uh, That's where the best music gets recorded, and I'm not <laughs> kidding at all. We're really Seriously. proud of this. And uh, those of you who pick this up, we hope you really enjoy it. Those of you who don't get a chance but would like to check it out, it's also available on iTunes, uh, which was sponsored by PDXFM. We want to give them a big Yeah, yeah. the PDXFM. And they're walking thing. out the door right now. Yeah, Bye, guys. You taking off? Um, 
Hey, yeah. There we go. Hi, this, this stuff Hi. right here. <laughs> that was a beautiful see, curtsy. Is, this is breaking forth wall here. They can't see anything of that. Like. Yeah, I like it that way. It makes <laughs> me kind of happy. But yeah, you can check us out online. Just Google Target for tomorrow. And not you can do the number or F-O-R, and you'll find us. And even if you come to our show, you'll probably get some of this stuff for free because I hand out stuff like a madman. So, <laughs> yeah, but, but yeah. definitely donate to a good cause. Toys for Tots and Free Geek, free geek and, and the Oregon Food, food Bank. bank. Mm -hmm. Yes. So <laughs> you did it. I'm going to get off now. All right, bye. Thank Thanks, you, guys. Thanks, we'll guys. be back with you in a minute. Awesome. They're staying. Can I catch them? Oh, we're going to try to go to bed? Good. Okay. okay. Testing, testing. Will we be able to hear her? Yes. We will be able to hear her. Wasn't that sweet of the guys to come in with those T-shirts and that was CDs? Awesome. That was yeah. awesome. And to play all day. I hope people pay good money for those at the auction tomorrow as well. They should. Because I want one. Yeah. You're not allowed to bid. I'm not allowed to bid? You'll be busy doing a show. I want a t-shirt, and I'm not allowed to bid. Just Don't saying. quit whining. They're going to give you a t-shirt for free now. No, well, I'll wear it on uh, Meme PDX. All right, fine. Is the band a startup? Yes, they're a startup. See? They use technology. They record stuff. things. Yeah, there's music and stuff. Oh, uh, you're such a difficult person to work small. with. Oh, and I don't, I don't know where we are on fundraising, but before we came on, we were at a thousand. We made it over the thousand yeah. bump. Yes, we were. Now thousand. it should be no problem to get like fifty grand. Yeah, that's the that's the hardest hurdle, and then after <laughs> that it's all downhill from there. So you guys work on that? Yeah. I don't even know where my camera where, is. Camera? That, oh. Who no. am I? Am I Kim Hi, Kimberly? Yeah, right there. <laughs> Hi, Kimberly. So we got over the thousand dollar hurdle, you guys. If we could just do that fifty more times. Yeah, that'd be awesome. I would feel that this whole thing was a success. Clearly. Are and we, I'm, He's got the he's got the Beth Q. Yeah. Maybe. Are we ready? Are we ready? Yeah. Hi Beth, can you hear us? Beth, can you hear us? Hello. Nope. Okay. Don't have her. Okay. Okay. Back to you guys. <laughs> you know we, we were trying to come up with ideas about how to use the fudge uh -huh. uh, for for raising money. So yeah. Marie said that if a certain amount could be donated she would divulge the recipe <gasps> on air. Really? And so, a secret recipe. so how it. much? Handed down through the family. <laughs> you guys have no idea how amazing that fudge is. <laughs> it's really, really good. It's good enough that I ate on camera, and yeah. I will get in trouble for that she later. She split it across the floor so we can't. I was trying to share, A, I was trying to share with mm -hmm. someone, and B, I was afraid I would. I know, it. that's why I was so sad. It was, it. you can't have more on camera. Besides that, you're like, you're messy and you look at your tired. I know. And I, mm. I'm just saying. Okay. You know I'm right. Fine. No, I'll be okay. I'm going to have some later. Don't take a nap because I will finish that fudge. <laughs> time, so. Okay, so how much money would we have to raise to get Marie to divulge the secret family fudge recipe? Uh, in this hour. Yeah, you in all win. In this hour. You all win. No, they'd have the to, they would have to give us the money in this hour. It would have to be oh. special Marie fudge you. money. Marie <laughs> <laughs> Okay, that was kind of so funny. So we're at a thousand. We're at a thousand. Last sure. we heard. Can somebody let's look at the causes page and let us know say, where we are? Let's say we're at a thousand. Brian's going to look. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, producer Brian. <laughs> Executive How much is this producer. recipe worth to the family? Yeah. You know? Is this well, like a Heinz, like, we, has to go down and <laughs> <laughs> trade? Yeah. It's pretty dang good. No, it's pretty valuable. Yeah, I know. What do you say? If we can get to 2,000 by the end of Strange Love Live? Do you think we can do that? Sure. So that if we if we had, we have 1,000, if we could get up to 2,000 by the end yeah. of Strange Love Live? I would share it with the entire audience. I mean, I would tweet it. I would okay. Facebook it. Can we put it on the on the 30-hour day page? Yes. Yes. Okay. okay. So if you guys can get up to two thousand dollars on facebook uh causes on, on causes, our yeah. on our site yep. just go to the 30hourday.org and just click the donate button give us money yeah. and we will post her fudge recipe and really we all win yeah. oh. really the yeah. world so, wins with well, yeah, exactly. being in open source. <laughs> so that, open sourcing that fudge recipe yeah. can be the best thing <laughs> the that happened thing to all ever, of us ever ever just a little money we're just, all winning. You know. it really is the world's best fudge Yes, it yeah. definitely I've is. had fudge. I'm a fan of fudge, and that's, <laughs> that's some good, good fudge. fudge. I try not to eat fudge, actually, because I like it a little too much. 
Mike's running around back there, so I don't. So does anyone know what our money level is currently at? Twelve hundred dollars. All right, nice. So we need you eight closer. Woo! So only eight hundred more. Eight hundred more before Strange Love Live is over. Well, who's who's the cause right now? Uh, Free, Free Geek, Geek is currently the cause. Free Geek is currently the cause. Okay. Right. Well, that's appropriate. Thanks, exactly. Brian. All perfect. right. So Free Geek will continue to be the the cause for okay. the duration of Strange Love Live, cool. and if we can get up to two thousand dollars, fudge recipe for all. Perfect. All right, are we ready for Beth? Beth, can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. Can you hear me? Hey, cool. Yay! Hello! Hey, Beth. Can Hello. you still hear us? Well, I can see Marie and I can see Amy. It's so nice to see old friends. Hi. <laughs> Where are you calling from? I, I'm in California in, in the Bay Area. Mm -hmm. How's the weather? <laughs> uh, it's 60 degrees. It was 60 degrees today. <laughs> nice. Oh, it was. It was 50 here. And in London. And Sunday and sunny. Nice. I this. I have this urge to yell to talk to you. Hi, I'm Cammy. We've never met. <laughs> <laughs> but I feel like I know you. <laughs> well, I, I hope that's good. I've heard some not so nice things about myself, but. Maybe that's why we couldn't get the phone. <laughs> no, it's breaking up. I'm sorry. Sorry, I, I just want to wanna talk to her. Could Cammy leave the stage? No. So we've been talking about um, social media and uh, nonprofit. And this is something you know a little bit about. Oh, yes. I've been listening to the conversation. <laughs> I think it's been great. It's great to hear uh, the latest thinking uh, from Amy Sapple Ward and all the innovative things she's doing. And, um, <laughs> and also to hear Marie and to hear the story again about Free Geek. So uh, by it, the way, I kicked in a hundred bucks. Um, I hope it gets matched at least three or four ooh, times. Nice. Nice. If we get that match. We're that much closer to fudge, people. Man. That's all I'm oh, you know, as soon as she said fudge, man, I'd like look <laughs> at my credit card. You know. <laughs> man, what is it? You're giving to a good cause, and you get to know how to make the fudge. That's oh yeah. Win-win all around. Everybody's happy. It's uh, yeah, sure thing. <laughs> so, do you have anything to add to the non-fudge portion of the conversation? Well, I guess the thing I've been thinking about, reflecting about over, um, it's funny, I'm hearing an echo, and every time I pause to think, I hear myself, and I want to loop and repeat what I'm saying, but I'll avoid that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so basically, I'm going to take my earplugs out, and um, I'll put them back in when you ask me a question, but I was thinking about this whole thing and how hard it's been um, around social media and nonprofits, and you know, I was out there really early, where I was kind of late, and some people looked at me kind of funny, and you know, you're going to read funny social networks. Are you crazy? What kind of crack are you smoking? Yeah. Uh, we kind of got soldiers on and was able to do a little bit, and the thing that really I, I'm most passionate about is um, finding other people who you know are have the passion are going out there and doing it like like and, or teaching others to do it like Amy or like Marie doing it showing uh, their passion for a cause telling their story and inspiring others to donate to the thing that they feel um, is passionate about so I've been thinking a lot about this and um, so for me these days it's not so much that I'm like working for a particular cause, but that, like, I want to urge everybody to be rhizomatic. Yeah, uh, everyone knows what rhizomes are. But, okay, so just think about ba a bamboo forest, and a bamboo forest, um, there's all these trees in a forest, but they're all connected at the roots. And so if one tree gets a lot of food, it'll pass it along to the others, and they won't starve. <laughs> so what I'm hoping to see is that that the behavior of being generous and wanting to be passionate about a cause and encouraging others to donate for the cause is just spread. Um, think about, uh, I don't know how many of you are my generation, but I, I grew up with this movie called Fantasia, um, at Walt Disney, and my favorite section of it was um, when uh, was The Sorcerer's Apprentice by Dukas, and there's a scene in it where um, 
uh, he, he, uh, Mickey the Mouse does this magic uh, trick to get the broom to do his work. And so there's this broom carrying all the buckets of water. And all of a sudden, and then Mickey takes a nap. And all of a sudden, he's like almost drowning in all this water. So he goes and he takes an axe and he chops up the broom. And he said, problem solved. And then he goes back to his thing. And all of a sudden, all those little pieces of the broom turn into more brooms. And they're all bringing the water. So this is this idea that I think that all of us, if we um, are passionate about causes, like what you're doing for this 30-hour um, fundraising, you'll inspire others to do it, and they'll inspire others, <laughs> kind of the networked approach. And um, so that's the inspiring part. On the, the flip side of it, we also need to educate nonprofits to be open to this. Um, yes. uh, I, I've been using the term free agent fundraisers. Um, I think uh, that... Amy so aptly described as you know there you know there's people who care about your what you're doing out there as a nonprofit, and you just need to you know say thank you, take them to lunch, pay attention to them, you know, you know make them feel important, share your fudge recipe with them. <laughs> Please. And um, so I think you know I'm really excited really to see how far button. we've come um, with all of this, and I'm really inspired by seeing you guys sitting there over and doing this telethon. And now I'm going to put my earplugs back in and listen to the echo. <laughs> nice. Beth, thank you so much. That was really, really wonderful. I'm really glad that you were able to join us. I'm sorry it took you so long to, took us so long to get you on board. And, and we really, really appreciate it. Well, great. Thank you so much. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Beth. Can we have a big round of applause, a, blah, 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 a big round of applause for Beth and Marie and Amy, please? Thank you. Woo! <laughs> So I think we're going to go ahead and um, we're going to bring, why don't you guys go ahead and we're going to bring Courtney up and then, uh, and then I think we'll have a little music and then we've got another couple guests to join us. Thank you so much. Hello. Hey. <laughs> Ooh, production Can we do swears? Yeah. Sure. We're allowed to do swears. Don't ask yeah. Dr. Normal, but yeah, yeah, you can do swears. Can totes do swears? Mm -hmm. As awesome. a matter of fact, I think if you swear, they might give us more money for our fudge. Yeah. Really? <laughs> All we need I'm is just money saying. For the fudge, so. All right, cock. Enjoy. <laughs> Enjoy. This is pretty a nice right there. So. <laughs> Obviously. This is Sorry. Courtney Hummeister. Did I get it right? You totally did. Oh, yes. God, thank goodness. Okay. Um, I'm going to read all this. I know this, though. Okay. Uh, I'm going to start with the fact that she's the host of Livewire. I am that. Which, if you are not familiar with Livewire, I'm very sorry. What? You're not a public radio nerd is your problem. I'm not, a, I'm not even a public radio nerd. And you, you and are you guys familiar. are awesome. Thank you. It doesn't hurt that you had Captain Bog and Salty play. Right. Oh, Lauren Hoskins he's is amazing. brilliant. Yeah. He's and brilliant. He's funny even when he's not being a pirate. Um, absolutely. <laughs> Actually, I think he's funnier when, when he's, he's not, not being, being a pirate. pirate. <laughs> Isn't that true funny. of everyone? Like, there's pirates kind of aren't It funny. depends on whether you ask my child or not, though. Right. I mean, right. Obviously, <laughs> if you ask my child, he's the most amazing man on the planet mm -hmm. when he's a pirate. Well, I those, think he's funny. Those kids go piracy. insane for that band. Yeah. Totally. And Lauren calls it um, the Fisher Price, my first mosh pit. Yes, he does. And it, <laughs> is, it is an accurate description of what happens. It's I amazing, know. like the frothing little frenzy of the kids. It's like a little mini like pit. It turns into this whirlpool, and you're like, God, those kids are going to kill each other, but they're so happy. Yeah. 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 We're not joy. here to talk about Lauren. I remember joy and hope. Oh. <sighs> <laughs> kids, cute kids. Too bad what happened to them. Right, exactly. Peg they turned into us. Killed them all. Um, we're not here to talk about Lauren, though. We're no, here we're to not. Talk about you. Me. Awesome. <laughs> um, Co-creator and now producer of True Stories. This is this is not having anything to do with, with Rogue House, though. Um, it's not. Thing. That's not even on the card. It has nothing to do with Roadhouse. Why don't you tell us about the True Stories? Um, True Stories is a memoir series that is, um, uh, I started with Mark Aceto. He's a, a, a novelist and playwright and um, it's, it was essentially for me, um, mm -hmm. I'm not what you might call a self-starter, <laughs> so um, <laughs> I have to create external deadlines in order to get things done. Mm -hmm. and, and actually, uh, and some people may not know this, and uh, so we're teaching here tonight. There's a lot um, of teaching going <laughs> but, on. But I'd like to teach you all how to make fudge. Yeah. Yeah. 
yeah which is delicious we need a recipe for that sorry but when um external deadlines uh are even more effective if there's hundreds of people involved like if you let down hundreds of people instead of say one like you said you're gonna do a 30-hour telethon just kind of on a whim exactly because maybe you yeah notes exactly don't do that again yeah. No, I think that uh, I think, I think that stuck. it's working out fairly I think we're well. Have to do it again. Right? Aside from the no sleep uh, yeah. issue, hmm. didn't right. really think about that, yeah, did yeah, you? I got a little confused with how many hours there were. <laughs> <laughs> right, it's hard to count it's, that high. Math is You're hard. Cute that it way. really is. Yeah, no. I don't know what comes after 23. I wanted a nice round number. Mm. Right, right. 23, 30. 30. 20, it could be. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> it's hard. My right? watch says right. 15. True stories. <laughs> External deadline, letting down hundreds of people. Right, exactly. So that's oh. kind of why we created True Stories. Mm -hmm. um, but it's it's um, it's some hilarious. Well, and Chelsea Kane is one of the stable. We sort of have a stable of True Stories writers, and mm -hmm. Chelsea Kane wrote uh, Heartsick, Evil at Heart, mm -hmm. um, this really screwed up th thriller series about a female serial killer. And she mm -hmm. is, a lot of people don't know, absolutely hilarious. <laughs> um, yeah, she's written some. Uh, I don't know why I laughed when you said she's hilarious. <laughs> Oh my she's god, she is! Like, oh my god, she's so she funny. is! Even just mentioning she's right. hilarious is right. hilarious. I mean, she yeah. she she actually one of her story one of my favorite stories of hers begins her like the the first line of the story mentions um, chocolate on a taint, <laughs> like a chocolate perineum, <laughs> like is in that. Is that that's probably not appropriate. That's like, not the appropriate swear for the fudge recipe. I'm fine. Stuff. It was chocolate related. Yeah, the swear was fine, but if anyway. you guys give us money, I'll tell her not to say taint again. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, just filthing it up uh, after the Meyer Trust was here. Not good. It makes good. me happy. All right, you're gonna read something, but before you you read, and then don't run away because I want you to tell us about Roadhouse. Okay, I'm I will talk about Roadhouse. Well, okay. this is um, uh, this is a piece that uh, I will I'll probably read on the show tomorrow. In some Sneak form, reading. it it may um, it may change after tonight. So uh, this is the testing ground. So this is the testing this ground. Is if test. we could have this be a workshop. Okay. That would be great for yeah. me. Fantastic. Okay. Feedback on there? Oh, you know yeah. what? Asking for feedback on the internet is like um, asking to be stabbed multiple times <laughs> in the, the chat eye. Room. It is. I'm sure they've got it. It's oh, like when you God, ask me if you have please. any lint on your shirt. I don't really want to look yeah, at it. Yeah, it's not. I don't want to look okay. at it. I'm sure the people are very kind. Rick and I will be quiet now. You go. Okay. <clears throat> um, so this is. Uh, we're, we're recording two shows tomorrow night, and one of them will air uh, in the new year. So this is about New Year's resolutions. Uh, <clears throat> so the odds are over. And I think for most of us, this is very good news. Terrorism, war, the slow yanking away of our civil, li of our civil liberties. And then there was what I like to call the not so great depression. It's all been pretty chock full of suckage. But now we get a new start with the teens. We can reimagine ourselves as people with rights and maybe somewhere down the road, people with money and you know, homes and possessions and things. And maybe with this new start, it's time to reimagine resolutions. We've all made what seem to be some pretty colossal mistakes. So instead of being about what we're going to do, I think it should be about what we're not going to do, what we're never going to do again. To get you started, I've made a list of my never again, split it, split out.